Saludos amigos, ¿cómo están? Nuevamente Daniel Sicar compartiendo con ustedes excelentes videos para el aprendizaje correcto del idioma inglés. Queremos con ustedes compartir temas atractivos para el correcto aprendizaje del idioma en su día a día, que puedan practicarlo entre ustedes, ¿sí? familiares, ejecutivos. Topics that are very interested for your daily basis, ¿ok? En su día a día. Traemos hoy un tema bastante interesante como todos los que hemos realizado en nuestros previos videos. Por supuesto, los invitamos a que se suscriban, que los revisen, a que practiquen con nosotros. Y el día de hoy tenemos lo que es el tema de Relative Clauses, ¿sí? lo que son las cláusulas relativas. Relative Clauses, which are very important on a daily basis. For your careers, if you guys are students, if you guys are preparing for tests, these are topics that are related to grammar. And we want to go deep, we want to understand them properly. So we have the defining relative clauses, which are, por supuesto porque tenemos dos, ¿no? The defining, las definidas, and the non-defining, las no definidas, cláusulas relativas. These are the defining relative clauses, okay? As we can read here, defining relative clauses give essential information. Ellas nos transmiten lo que es información esencial en la oración. Define, no, define no relative clauses, give essential information. The man, for example, in this example, the man lives next door. He is very friendly. In order for you to short that sentence, para cortar, and to connect that sentence, vas a usar cláusulas eh, relativas, en este caso las definidas. Entonces, the man who lives next door is very friendly. No identificamos el sujeto, por eso tuvimos que usar la cláusula definida, que con este caso, who, nos indica que es la persona que vive en al lado, ¿sí? el vecino. Entonces, the man who lives next door, es importante saber que es el que vive al lado, because we don't have too much information. So, the man who lives next door is very friendly. You see, it's a whole sentence. La anterior eran dos oraciones. Entonces, the man lives next door. The man is very friendly. In this case, you make one sentence, hacen una sola oración, con, apoyándonos en estas cláusulas relativas que nos brindan información esencial. Y el who es el que entra a darnos esa información. The man who lives next door, now we know who it is, who is he, is very friendly. You see, the man who lives next door is very friendly. Check this out, check that other sentence. We know a lot of people, ¿sí? Son oraciones individuales. We know a lot of people. Conocemos mucha gente. They live in London. Ellos viven en Londres, right? Okay, but if you want to short this sentence, you say, we know a lot of people who live in London. Conocemos varias gente, ¿sí? o variedad de personas, o gente, que vive en Londres, ese que vive en Londres, because you are using people, right, person, people, you use who, para personas, normalmente usted maneja who, ¿sí? singular o plural, we know a lot of people who live in London, conocemos bastantes personas que viven en Londres, ¿sí? it helps you to connect, nos ayuda a usted a conectar las ideas, y nos brinda porque nos brinda la información esencial. It doesn't let us just get stuck on or just get lost. Sorry. So who is the first relative clause that we are looking at or analyzing in here? Estamos analizando. There are many others, but I want you. Or in our next further videos, we will just talk about them. For now, I want you to have clear the context. Lo que quiero es que vayan ampliando, abriendo su mente al tema de cláusulas relativas, que sepan que nos ayudan a, con a conectar, a simplificar oraciones. Now we have another example here. We use, eh, or a tip, tip, rather a tip. We use who or that in a relative clause. We use do, who or that in a relative clause when we are talking about people. It's possible to use that. It's not like the best option, but it's possible. That is más usado en cosas, artículos, animales, but eh, junto con which, but that it could be it could be possible with people. 
okay, in the down in the lower part or down this paragraph, below this paragraph, we, right next to the no the tower, this Big Ben picture, we find here uh, another another question. It says, where are the eggs, right? Where are the eggs? They were in the fridge. Those, there are two like two sentences. One is a question, the other one is an affirmative sentence. Donde están los huevos, right? Where are the eggs? They were in the fridge. Ellos estaban en la nevera, right? But why if what if I want to simplify that? Simplificar eso. Pues uso la, las cláusulas relativas, como por ejemplo, where are the eggs that were in the fridge? Ya se vuelve una sola pregunta. You see? Where are the eggs? Hasta el momento no tenemos mucha información. That were in the fridge, que estaban en la nevera. Then we have essential information. Information that allow us, that allow us to know, okay, what is happening, see? Or in the sentence, what, what is the sentence about? We have another example with individual or separate sentences here. The window has now been repaired. The window has now been repaired. See? La ventana ha, see, ahora ha sido reparada. Has now been repaired. So has been is a tense that we saw, which is present perfect, right? Present perfect is one of the tenses that we saw. If you haven't, if you haven't checked that video, or our class about present perfect, of course I recommend you to check it, check all our videos, do not forget tips like spelling the alphabet, be very focused watching movies, reading, checking the news, but follow our videos so you don't get lost, okay? So here in this case, the window has now been repaired, it was broken, estaba rota, la otra oración, you will simplify using the relative clauses. This is defining relative clauses, guys. Play, pay attention. This is defining relative clauses. So the example or this sentence is going to be the window you can use either which or that. Puedes usar o which or that. The window which was broken, la cual fue partida o rota, has now been repaired. See? Or you can also use that. The window that was broken, que fue okay, partida, que fue partida o que fue rota has now been repaired ha sido ya reparada la parada is the window which or that was broken has now been repaired so that's the way it is in that case you will be totally fine see? now that is more usual than which when we talk about things lo que comentamos en este caso that sí es un poco más común that is more usual than which when we talk about things, okay? Just for you as a tip. You can also use that with animals. So that's the cat which I picked up from the streets. Ese es el gato que recogí de las calles. That's the cat, por animales usamos which or that. That's the cat which I picked up from the streets, okay? That's the soccer ball that or which we play the final with, con la que jugamos la final. So, la pelota de fútbol con la que jugamos la final. That's the soccer ball, right, which we played the final, right, the final match. Okay, so just pay close attention to that. En la siguiente imagen, que es la siguiente imagen que vamos a ver, vamos a tener las no definitivas, defining de, de, de las no definidas cláusulas relativas, right? These are non-defining because they, they don't give us, no nos dan, they don't give us essential information. They just add extra information, but that information is not essential for us to understand the situation, for understand the sentence. So, in this case, leamos, no, las oraciones de relativo, no, explicativas dan información adicional. So, it's additional information about a person or thing already identified. Algo ya identificado. 
la preposición de relativo suele ir separada por una coma del resto de la oración. You usually use a coma. So let's check this example, no? My mother, no? My mother who lives in Madrid is 60 years old. The additional information here is 60 years old, which is not that important. My mother who lives in Madrid. My mother is already the subject. Ya sabemos quién es el sujeto. Entonces, si quitamos la cláusula relativa, in this case, who lives in Madrid, we still understand the sentence. Seguimos entendiendo la, 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 la información, ¿sí? ya que tenemos el sujeto. My mother is 65 years old. You see? Mi mamá que vive en Madrid tiene 65 años. But if you say my mother is 65 years old, ok, mi madre es, tiene 65 años, podemos entender la oración. The extra information is who lives in Madrid. Ok, it's a little, it's extra information, but it's not essential for us to understand that his mother is 65 years old. No, no es esencial para que entendamos que la madre tiene 65 años, ok. So in this case, eh, this is for you to practice, okay? This is for you to practice non-defining relative clauses is extra information. Es información extra, okay? Eh, for example, Nikki, if it's the name of the dog, Nikki, which is our favorite dog, right? Lives, at, lives in my room. So you can omit, you can avoid the clause, which is my favorite dog, and you still understand. Nikki lives in my room. If you know that that's the dog. So that's what you're going to practice with the relative clauses. Now, eh, if we check the next picture, si miramos lo que es la siguiente imagen, if we check the next picture, vamos a encontrar some other examples, okay? So it says relative clauses and we find a chart. Entonces, en esta siguiente imagen, Miramos eso, ese cuadro amarillo con azul, relative clauses, y encontramos eh, lo que es la, la regla, rule, y el ejemplo, example. So, who or that refer to people. La regla, entonces, sí, podemos contar con that para personas. Who es la más común. But that also refer to people. Who or that refer to people. And we have an example. They cut the man, ellos cogieron, ¿sí? tal vez lo puedes usar también como capturaron. They cut the man, or they cut the thieves. One more time, thieves son ladrones, ¿no? How do you spell thieves? Once again, T for Tom, H for hotel, I for ice, E for elephant, V for Victor, right? E for elephant, S for sun. They cut the thieves, right? Who spied for China? Que espiaron para China. Or who spied or that spied for China is also possible. For this example, oh, they locked, encerrar, que locked spells L O C K E D, encerrar. They locked the prisoners, they locked the prisoners. That killed uh, the president, okay? That killed the mayor. They locked mayor, alcalde, no? Mayor spells M for Mike, A for Apple, Y for Yellow, right? Sorry, M for Mike, A for Apple, right? In this case, it will be J, right? For Jess, O for Oscar, and R for Romeo, okay? The mayor. Now, we continue here. In the second rule, we see which or that to refer for objects, okay? Which or that, and also for animals. Which or that, so the example is, I lost the map which she gave me, el cual él me entregó o me dio. I lost the map which she gave me, or you can also use that. I lost the map that she gave me, right? I spilled, reggae, I spilled the water, reggae, el agua, right? That you 
passed me, que me pasaste, right? Or that you served me, right? I spilled, spilled the spells S for sun, I for ice, right? Excuse me, S for Sam, P for Patrick, I for Ice, L for Lima, T for Tom, which is the past of spill. I spilled, right, the water, right, that she served me or that he served me. Whose is also referring to, to possession. Whose is another relative class that it works for? Possession. Lo que es poseer algo. She complained, ella se quejó, to the man whose dog bit her. ¿Sí? ¿Sí? Ella se quejó del, ¿sí? del señor, del hombre. She complained to the man whose dog, del cual el perro la mordió. Right? So it's always possess, a possession. So the dog belongs to the man. El perro pertenece al hombre. ¿no? Entonces, she complained to the man whose dog, del cual su perro la mordió. Right? whose dog beat her, whose, right? The guy whose car is outside, please uh, park it, park it in another place or move it. The car whose owner is here, please go ahead and move the car, right? Park it somewhere else. Siempre algo que pertenezca al objeto. When refers to the moment in time, pero también en la mitad de una oración entra como una cláusula relativa. Christmas Day, right, in this example, Christmas Day is a day, es un día cuando, Christmas Day is a day when people are happy, cuando las personas están felices. You see, when is not a question here, no, it's not working as a wish question, it's working as a relative clause. Cuando la gente es feliz. Where refers to a particular place, particular place, right? We visited the house, visitamos la casa, no? we visited the house where our father was born. Visitamos la casa donde nuestro padre nació. We visited the house where our father was born. We also have here, it says in non-defining sentences, the word that cannot replace who, no, that cannot replace who or which, en lo que son las no definidas, no, the word that cannot replace who or which, for example, Mata Hattie, right here, who was a famous female spy, was born in Holland, you cannot use that, okay, okay, you cannot, you cannot do, use that to replace who. Buckingham Place, which is in London, right, is a favorite tourist site. Which is in London, which is in London, you see it's giving us extra information, but it's not essential to understand. It differs from, the, the, they caught the man who spied for China, no, who spied for China. Y ya estamos, sabemos que necesitamos saber que el hombre espió, no, en China. So this is a very important topic, no? Relative clauses. Queremos, por supuesto, I want you to still review in this. Check our videos. Please subscribe. If you want something to complement this topic, we will really appreciate your feedback. We want to improve our English no? with your English and work as a team. And nothing is perfect, but we really need you to, to understand different topics, the comple complexity that we handle here. Por favor, eh, suscríbanse, continúen viendo los videos. Do not forget to check movies in English with subtitles, without subtitles, over and over again. Listen to songs in English, adapt your life eh, to English. Just try to be surrounded by English all the time. And we will continue reviewing great topics for you. Este fue Daniel Sicar. Invitamos a que sigan conectados con nosotros en nuestro canal y seguiremos en contacto con nuevos temas. Que estén muy bien. See you in another opportunity.